Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Theatrecom video, we're going to be tackling three news pieces which have popped up, as usual, over the past 24 or so hours of the technology variety. The first two are going to be Vega related. For example, the fact that apparently, at least according to 3D Center, there are functions in the Vega driver which are disabled and are not allowing the GPU to function correctly when it comes to power consumption. Therefore, the GPU is actually eating up more energy than what it should. Then we'll move over to RX Vega and BIOS information when it comes to the AIBs and possible release dates for Vega. And then we're going to finish the video discussing the Xeon CPUs from Intel with the Perly platform. But first things first, let's go with the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition drivers, which have been in the news quite a bit recently. So this information originated on 3D Center and then was posted on a couple of other websites including pcgameshardware.de which it was then snagged and then sent to me by a uh, chap by the name of Bass. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's B-A-S. So thank you very much to him for the email. So anyway, um, I, most of you are aware that uh, the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition is of course a GPU which is aimed primarily at professionals, but that's not to say that it's that simple. There are certainly functionality in the driver which aren't exactly explainable. Now remember, AMD have said, they've gone on record and said that this is not a customized VG driver. It is it is basically writ rewritten from the ground up. And Rajal Kadori actually joked and said, I wish it was just a customized uh, Fiji driver. It would be a lot easier for the team, or words to that effect, anyway. So there are a few things which have already been mentioned. The tile based rasterizer, for example, doesn't seem to be working right now. It's, it's either completely deactivated or it isn't reaching its. Um, potential. It, it just doesn't seem to be working quite as well as advertised. Uh, we've discussed that in depth, so I don't want to go over it one more time. So you can you can search for Vega Rasterization on the channel and that will pop up. But the new piece of news concerns the adaptive voltage and frequency scaling and advanced, advanced clock gating, ACG. Now, apparently, uh, at least according to these reports, the efficiency could improve with further driver, uh, further driver updates. Active adaptive voltage and frequency scaling has been something that AMD introduced back in Polaris. But at least according to these reports, it doesn't seem to be working correctly. Uh, ACG, for example, should allow the sleeping of individual GPU parts when they're not needed. Basically, it just shuts them down and, pa and does advanced power gating, but that doesn't seem to be the case right now. So what's essentially happening is VG, um, I'm sorry, Vega is just eating up energy when it doesn't really need to. So there's a quick question I have. Well, there's a couple of questions. The first is how much difference are future drivers going to make? And that's for A. And for B, why isn't this now? Like, is it because it's the Frontier Edition and therefore it doesn't need it? Or is it just that AMD haven't finished with the drivers yet? And this brings us to the next, uh, the next uh, point of discussion, I guess. And that would be AMD and the... AIB Partners BIOS uh, situation. So I actually spotted this on Reddit yesterday and once again this rumour originates from 3D Center. Obviously this is not confirmed by anyone but well it looks like it could be somewhat genuine. I'm not saying it is genuine, I can't verify it because I don't have a source from AMD who would be willing to go on record and say this, let's put it that way. But anyway there's a table which demonstrates the schedule of Vega. Currently, uh, we can see that BOM, which by the way is built of materials, for those who don't know, it's essentially the shopping list of what you need to create Vega. Think of it like the listings of, it, of when you're trying to make, um, I don't know, like a recipe. You basically, you need X, you need Y, you need Z to be able to put the card together. Uh, we've seen engineering validation tests. Those have already taken place. Those of June to beginning of July. DVD, which is the design validation tests, happened mid-July. So basically, that's probably going on about now. And now, and now here comes the really odd thing. If you take a look at the date of the BIOS, 
Well, that's when it starts to get a bit tricky, because it seems like the BIOS is only being scheduled to be sent to AIB partners on August the 2nd, and there's no word on launch dates yet from AMD. Now, remember that RX Vega is scheduled to appear at SIGGRAPH 2017. That, by the way, is until August the 3rd. So it's possible we might see a paper launch. In other words, it launches at SIGGRAPH on the 2nd, and then we don't see it actually on store shelves for a couple of months. It's not like you can do much without the BIOS, and obviously, just because you've got the BIOS, then you need to put it on the cards and then ship them. Realistically, that's going to take a month or two. Obviously, I'm saying a month or two because it depends on the quantity of cards that they're willing to go with on launch for A, how many cards are being allocated, sorry, how many GPUs, in other words, how many cores and so on are being allocated to different partners, and basically, it, there's a lot of questions. The BIOS is not something you can ship with a kind of ill-do state either. It's not like a driver where you can easily update it. Yes, I'm sure you're going to get someone in the comments that says, hey, it's pretty easy to update a GPU BIOS. Yes, it is, if you know how to do it. And by which I mean that most people are not confident. They're not, they're not happy to do that. I mean, I know people who were bloody scared of overclocking their graphics card. They, they don't want to even do that, let alone... Uh, update the BIOS on the graphics card. So you can't have a graphics card which is like, it will do. I actually know people who don't even update their motherboard BIOS, even though I've said to them, you really need to update this because there's like major issues with whatever that board has problems with, and they've just not done it. Like, I do know someone who even has a Ryzen build, and they're still running, I think, their stock of BIOS, or maybe the, the BIOS just after the cards were, uh, the, the, the motherboards were released. And obviously, that's impacting his memory timings, the clock speed of his RAM, and God knows what else. But he just isn't willing to do it. I've said, I'll do it for him, and he just doesn't want to do it. He's just frightened he's going to balk his board. And it's a lot more acceptable to do that for a motherboard because there are so many easy tools. I mean, most motherboards, you don't even need to really do much work, to be honest. You can just pop in a USB stick on the BIOS screen and just tell it, yep, yeah, do that, and it's going to be quite happy to do it for you. So, BIOSes obviously do everything from setting power limits, temperature limits, power states, fan curves, and God knows what else, and actually making the GPU function. So this isn't just like, eh, I'm sure it'll do. What the release date for Vega is going to be there for, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a paper launch or very limited quantities. For what it's worth, and I can't mention sources, but I can tell you that I have spoken to a couple of GPU manufacturers. I can't mention who they are. And they have told me that I probably will be getting RX Vega for review. Obviously, it will be a review sample, so I have to go back. But, emphasis on but, they don't know when they're getting the samples. <laughs> so they can't actually tell me um, and obviously that's kind of making things a bit tricky for them if not only for me so that's quite interesting so I can tell you that at the very least that the actual partners themselves are a bit kind of like confused about this and I don't blame them to be totally honest anyway uh, I'm going to finish the video with Pearly because well why not these slides are courtesy of videocards.com. Now, the slides will actually be fully unveiled on a, uh, because NDA lifts basically tomorrow in the morning. But most of this information is kind of already known, but what we have here is basically confirmation. So, Intel, of course, are pushing the Xeon processor lineup for mission critical applications. And there are two separate components the Skylake and the Cascade Link. Basically, Pearly is going to be expected to trans transition, excuse me, and finish by 2018. That's when they're saying that so internally. I won't read out all of the differences between the Skylake architecture versus Broadwell, but most of it is pretty self-explanatory. No, level 2 cache is improved. Level 1 has been doubled. Execution units have been drastically improved as well. And we've also seen the introduction of AVX512 with two FMAs per core, along with one megabyte of M MLC. So what that basically means is some applications, Intel is certainly going to have the advantage in the very high end with AVX512. Um, there is also, of course, the mesh interconnect that AMD have kind of 
their own version of when it comes to their own processors, which is the CCX design and the other bits and bobs that they're kind of doing with that and basically how they just simply slot their CPUs together. It's very kind of similar here, but obviously it's not like Intel stole it or anything like that. In fact, even Nvidia are kind of thinking similar um, concepts. Basically, the different dies are being much better interconnected and in theory at least we should see a much higher bandwidth reduced latency this is once again the mesh interconnect something we discussed a couple of weeks ago so if you want more information on that you can do a search on the channel i'm just kind of glazing over this stuff because well it's been discussed before now the platform itself is going to be based on the socket p which is lga3647 and will have up to eight sockets available i just want to put that into some level of context this is eight sockets this is not eight cpu dies on one little chip we're talking eight sockets on a motherboard where you can have a skylink sp up to 28 cores so imagine just a couple of those on a uh, on a motherboard that is ridiculous the only possible way that I can see um, Intel having problems here is one, pricing, and B, what AMD are going to counter with. Unfortunately, we don't know uh, what the results are going to be versus Epic, and obviously I don't want to do in-depth speculation at the moment because we've not seen enough benchmarks. There are a couple of leaked ones, but yeah, I'm not really comfortable to say that it's enough to call it one way or the other. I do feel in some institutions, in some usage scenarios, AMD will have the advantage, especially when it comes to pricing. At the end of the day, these things are not cheap. Even the lower end SKUs are going to be quite expensive compared to AMD most likely. Speaking of SKUs, I won't read them out because I'll be here for way too long and you'll probably fall asleep by the time I'm finished. But basically clock speeds obviously are very different depending on the model you're going for along with the, along with the uh, number of cores. But for example, you can get some which are just just, just 2.4 gigahertz or even 2.1 gigahertz and others which go all the way up to like 3 point odd gigahertz and obviously the number of cores also uh, changes depending uh, i believe the lowest is like 10 cores but i could be wrong on that anyway hopefully you have enjoyed the video i'm gonna run off now so i'll see you soon take care bye for now